Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. This is your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 my Walk well, on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Even threads. So if y'all not on threads yet, go look us up. Go, you know, like us, subscribe to us on threads. But if you want to see our full length interviews, check out our YouTube membership. Go ahead and sign up for that, and you see all our full length interviews real, real quick and real, real easy before anybody else does. Because you know, he going to chop up all of this interview. You know, wait a minute. Y'all got to go I'm through so all sick these of clips under the bus the every interviews. time we start out. Episode here lately, don't you know these folks gonna get in the comments? Let them get the comments. Come on, truth? man! I'm not I, lying. I'm no, not you ain't lying. lying. Okay. You, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't told no lie. I'm gonna chop it. Okay, then. Look, if you don't chop it up, you can't make a lot of money. That's where I come from. That's the era I come from. But it's not you even got to the chop money. it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't. It's the that. attention span. People don't have that. No, what have I'm saying span. is where I come from. Uh -huh. You got to chop it up. Oh, you talking <laughs> something else? <laughs> Take yeah, it, man. Screw it. There you go. Hey, we got some guys here today, y'all. They don't need no introduction. These two guys right here, man, patriarchs in the in the whole you know hip hop world, the whole era of the South, man. Hey, man, we got a lot of hey, y'all about to love this show right here, man. Listen, man, I I got some stuff to show y'all today, man. I got oh uh, this no limit, uh, uh, man. This guy right here, fiend, been with no limit, and 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 so much more. Mm -hmm. But smoke D, smoke D, man. I heard you the first time, man. I ain't gonna lie, when I first heard you, mm -hmm. it was on that. It wasn't on the front, back, side, to side. Really, I did not know you on that, but I knew you from was that dang riding dirty, man. Live from the pen, man. Live from the pen, man. Live from the pen, man. <laughs> How you guys doing, man? Man, blessed, man. Really good. Blessed? Yes, sir. Man, y'all yes, yes, looking good, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you know, I got all this great. You niggas done come in here, man. <laughs> you know, I done got old, man. Y'all making niggas feel old, man. Don't let that old in, bro. Don't, <laughs> let, that, don't let that old in, man. <laughs> so man, hey man, listen man. How, you know one thing I love about hip hop man in the South man. You know, you you really from where y'all come from man. Think about how far have we've come since then. You know the South wasn't really respected at all when we first started this journey man. You know what I'm saying? As far as the music go man, but guys like y'all man, y'all didn't even pay that no attention man. It was more about the vibe and the music for the South, right? Right. 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 So, so, Steph, you want to get into it a little bit? I know you want to. See, yes, I don't want to just over exceed. See, he's the music guy. I'm not a music guy because I always feel like before I love <coughs> you as a musician, I need to know who you are as a person coming mm. up as a kid because a lot of times the reason why you write the things you write is because of the things you've been through as a childhood coming all the way up that got you where you are. Mm. So I just want people to know your history. So let's start off with you first. Okay. Um, Smoke born, D. Smoke yes, D. Sir. Yes, sir. Born and raised. Um, Mississippi? Born in Denver, raised in Mississippi. Okay, born in Denver. How old were you when you moved? Probably about two. Two? So you don't remember nothing about no, no Denver, Colorado? No, I'm Mississippi. Mississippi all the way? Texas, South Texas, Mississippi. Okay, so how come you, you were born in, what What happened? I, uh, my, my mom is from Mississippi, mm -hmm. my father is from South Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, they both met in Denver some kind of way. Oh, and they stayed up there till they had a baby. And yeah, then one decided to come back to Mississippi, another one decided to go back to Texas. I guess oh, so they split up. Yeah. And you were two. Yes, ma'am. And you stayed with your mom. Yes, ma'am. Did you get time with your dad at all? Do you know your father? No, ma'am. Don't Not know him at all. all. No, I don't know. Never met him. I met him, but I met him. I don't think that you ever know a person. You can kind of only know of them, mm -hmm. right? Like. You know, you never know what anybody's vantage point is. So, I had a chance to meet him several times, even travel with him, but I didn't know him. Mm. So what if that makes sense to you? Because he didn't open up and you didn't well, really try to break that. I mean, just reading a bottle or something, it tells you all the ingredients, but like in, in life, I never had a chance to. Really spend that time. I never had a chance to run to him when I got in trouble. Okay. I miss, you know, I miss some of the mm -hmm. elements of the drink. I know. You know what I'm saying? But I always say, like, if it's in the past, you can't go back and recreate the past. But if he's still here, you can now move forward from now onwards as long as the door is open. Oh, yeah. yeah you know no what doubt. I mean? No doubt. Do you feel like him not being there in your life as a child growing up affected your life anyhow? Uh, 
I suppose, I suppose, I'm just, I'm thankful to be here and I'm happy with who I am now. I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of one of those questions like you have to be there to answer it. Mm. I, mean, I don't know if I would have actually turned out better or worse because I didn't have that opportunity to spend time with them like that. Did you have any male figures in your life growing up? No. No? Because I always feel my, like, and I've always heard that men need to have a male figure in their life to my, show them how to become my, a man. I guess my, my male figure was me because I didn't have a male figure. I had to create a superhero for myself so I could protect me. Mm. I got tired of crying, I got tired of getting beat up. So I just decided I wanted to fight back. So my mm. helping hand came at the end of my own arm. So So you were bullied as a kid? Yeah, now I'm a bully bully. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get pain, you gotta get this over there. You. Yes, so real. Yeah. yeah. how was it for you growing up? Um, I think uh, growing up in New Orleans, Holly Grove, uh, Carrollton area, I think I had a pretty good life. You know, I'd, I'd be lying if, if I say anything different, you know? Okay. If I say anything different, you know? It went down wrong. It went down wrong. Go along. <coughs> it's going to take a little more coffee. Don't even trip. <laughs> I'm going to get you another swig. Shoot, I know about that cough right there. He's and when it go swig. down wrong, mm -hmm. I'm a country boy. A country. Say, when it, when it go down wrong, you got to stop for a minute and get it right. Y'all don't try to act like y'all ain't never done it before. Tell me too you know, cool. Everybody yeah. in here done done that. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? It's too hot outside. Uh, <laughs> so you said Carrollton's. It's Carrollton because when I hear about New Orleans, mm -hmm. I hear Uptown, I hear Downtown, I hear West, West Bank, Bank, I hear. Yeah. So where's Carrollton? I'm from Uptown. Uptown, uptown. okay. Carrollton okay. area is Uptown, Hollywood, okay. 17 Ward. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, ain't, that, ain't that where Birdman is from, Uptown? Birdman is from the Magnolia. 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 Third Ward. Third Ward. Uptown is big. It's big, huh? Uptown big, you know. It's its, um, it's, its own little unique uh, space of New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Every every area is dope in its own unique way. Yeah. Um, but um, Uptown is just, I have on my own personal upbringing, encounter, and growth, you know, grow up with that, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Man. And were you raised with your mom and dad as well? Yeah, I was raised with my mom and my dad. And uh, then at some point in time, you know, uh, they were not seeing eye to eye. And then it was um, me, my mom, and my brother. How old were you at that time? Uh, 12, but for the most okay. part, you know, I had my dad. I can still recall seeing my dad playing football with us when I was like four in, in uh, Conrad Park. You know what I mean? And uh, him talking to me like a grown-ass man when I was seven, eight years old, using words I had to go look up to have a, some dialogue with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, very unique um, upbringing, um, but I wouldn't change anything. You know? mm. yeah. But at 12, when they split up, were you able to still spend time with him? Yeah, the crazy thing is, uh, my mom, of course, she never, um, she never bad mouthed him, talked bad about him, and it was on me if I wanted to see him, mm -hmm. right? So what made her know that I wanted to see my dad was, when we moved to it, it had to be, I don't know how many miles, but it was miles. I would walk back to my old neighborhood from where we was to go see my dad. Wow. You know what I mean? So I was like, she was like, you really walked your ass from over here to the third wall back to Hollywood to go see her dad. I was like, yeah, you know, my cousin stay crazy. My grandmother owned like 85% of the block. She owned 85% of the properties on, on the street. Okay. So, you know, my dad, in my eyes, my family, you know, he was huge in our village. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They, he was loved and my mother was loved and like um, was looked at like no different, you know, to say that this was our liberty world. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but you know, when they separated, it was time for that separation to happen. And mm -hmm. Like sometimes people gotta go into their own individual corners and get it right, you know? But you know, kids though, the reason why I always ask that too is because kids never, they don't understand the fears of grownups. Mm. So even if a parent turn around and try to explain to them in a, in a decent manner where they still try to love both parents, mm. I always tell all, tell my kids, I say, you're not going to understand till you get your own kids, till you're grown, and really understand the fears of what men and women go through. So um, that's the reason why I like to ask that, because there's so many people watching it who are single parents who don't know if they need to stick into it for the kids, or should they split up, or how is this going to affect the kids? Some people are selfish where they're not thinking about the kids. They're just like, you know what, we'll be okay. There's so many single parents who are okay. You know what? Um in a lot of situations, will is stronger than love. You know what I'm saying? You can love a car, but are you willing to keep it? 
mm. you know, and take care of all the maintenance that comes with it. Mm. I love this car, but am I willing to deal with the bills that come with the maintenance? So in relationships, I think those are a lot of things that, that works with that as well. Will is stronger than love. Are you willing to tolerate some things that come with mm -hmm. the relationship? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of kids don't process that, that their parents were had lives before them. Right. And that is another something, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She, he may be just feeling himself out at this growth spurt of being a young adult, and now I'm a parent. Right. So, you know, that's a lot. You know what I mean? That's a lot. And I like to remind my kids that, you know, your mother had a decision about her own life when she decided to get on the table and have you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed or not. That's a very, very big sacrifice more than your father. Mm -hmm. She could have lost her life that day on bringing you into this world. Mm. So let's start there first, right? I start there with my kids and I start with them young so they can just process what okay. sacrifice really, really means because I think they can look at their parents a little different. You know what I'm saying? And that allowed me, like I said, my father used to talk to me like a grown ass man. You and know so that's why you do that with yours. I do. I, but I ain't gonna lie though, I end up adopting something differently um, to my son because I just didn't want to pour so much on him. So I dropped the one knee and I talked to him at his eye level so I don't appear so huge with my voice talking down to him. Mm -hmm. So I get on his level on one knee and I talk to him. How old was he? Right now he's 11. Okay. But these conversations start to happen when he's four or five. He's so smart. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, I know all people say about their kids, <laughs> but my wife is brilliant, right? So my son, I could see that he is, he's smart, a different type of smart for, for, for me to see mm -hmm. as somebody that age, right? right? So I, um, I'm in the process of being a father, but at the same time, uh, youthful enough to observe and want to eat that up myself and learn so much from him and us collectively as a family. You dig? Yeah, because there's no handbook to parenting at all. No, it is. And people don't understand that it's just a triangle. It isn't a handbook, but our grandparents were the guideline. Mm -hmm. That was the standard. And I think the standard has just been carved out. You know, whether it's about old age or it's, it's from um, being uh, disconnected. And I think it's not fair. You know what I'm saying? We don't have a rule book, but there's a standard. Mm -hmm. Can't confuse, there was a standard. When you went to your family reunions, if you've ever had mm -hmm. family reunions, you got to know cousins, they taught you how to interact with people. Right, right. You know, that's my cousin. Oh, I can't like her like that. She look good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so you, you, you learn certain things at these family reunions and these connections. And this was a standard. I can't forget this because I had a chance to do it. You know, not to be so awkward meeting new people and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So these were lessons that are not here today for the majority of us how we grew up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. But the generation that we're in now, there's too many um, house, broken households because the majority of people that sit where you sit, I want to say 90% are raised in single parent households, usually by the mom while the dad is gone off somewhere and so forth. It's a handful of people who had the opportunity, like myself, mm -hmm. who had both parents mm -hmm. in the household mm -hmm. and had that upbringing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can we change that? Is it that um, people are thinking more about themselves and not about their child, you know, the children that are bringing into the, this world that it wasn't really, they didn't ask to be brought here. How can we stop that? How can we have both parents be more? It's a, it's a big, it's a big, big responsibility to live selflessly. That's a responsibility mm -hmm. to just say, you know, I'm going to do this. It's a big responsibility for a man to say, I'm going to be a father. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stop my whoring in these streets, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna stop all this and focus on this one particular soul that it's saw me. It's not impossible. It, I'm, 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 I don't wanna, um, if I misspoke, thanks for correcting me. I'm just saying that the flesh is weak and it take mm -hmm. being in control of yourself and not being living on autopilot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you have to know the value of less is more. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think nothing about nothing until I found out who God was. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all of that other stuff, man, you could get it. When, I was, when I'm in them streets, you mm -hmm. could get it. It didn't matter who it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What night it was. If I catch you slipping, I'm at your house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hanging out. and bring. If you got a sister, my homeboy with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
That's just how it went down. Mm -hmm. And most people, if y'all don't want to tell the truth about it, that's the way we was young. When you're a young man, now you might have had a dad. My dad taught me that. He was over his girl house when I was over mine. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is some fathers. Let's be real. They brought a lot of plates to my house. Women brought plates and dropped them off and mixtapes to my dad's house. And, I, and, and, and we hung out and, you know, basically and watched him, you know, as the girls come through and bring plates. Different girls, different days. And then I learned from him. Later on, I started hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is real life. Now, for me, now everybody might not came up like that. Cause I'm a country dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But that's the way it was. Like you were getting at the girls, and if you didn't get the girl, mm -hmm. oh, you was considered weak. You know, you oh, that nigga ain't got no women. The first thing you ask a young boy when he coming to what? Man, was you, you got a girlfriend, youngster? You know, like the kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And, and and that's what I, I I find myself doing my boy like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, hey, would you, you you got a girlfriend yet? He'd be like, nah, daddy, nah. You know, that's the way they start off. Mm -hmm. And then you be trying to tell them, don't be having too many girlfriends. My, I ended up living with my mom, so I saw it differently. I, I, I didn't want my mom treated like uh, just an extra little chick. Yeah, so yeah. So I saw it differently, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't have a bunch of girlfriends. So you didn't have none? If I, if I dated a girl, I dated With that her. girl? Now, if I, if I was single and I, you know, like, I wasn't in a relationship, then I probably dated some. Yeah. But to be like, that's my woman, I didn't have more than one woman. Like, that's my woman at one time. I had my mother with my mom, my dad um, separated. I treated women like how I wanted my mom to be treated. Really? Of course. I, I wasn't like that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not you know I'm, I'm not knocking. I'm just trying to tell you that's how it was. Was you like yeah. that? Well, I'm sitting here and I have such of an amazing life yeah, because you had a mom and dad. I'm like, damn, I'm <laughs> saying that. Like, you, the you special, I'm you know what I'm saying? saying? I'm just keeping it funky, no, man. I, I like, like the I, real the truth, I, but I'm just yeah, but don't get me wrong, my mom is a she a real deal, but like it's it's nothing like having a mother and a father there. Yeah. Because they they provide different types of parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, a woman is emotional, you mm -hmm. kissy poo poo, and you still, a man is stern with logic and discipline. And it takes a, a, a culmination of both of those it things. Does. See, that's why. That's why you do I, it. Yeah, that's why I, I talk to this man <laughs> almost every day because he's experienced at having something that I never had. Never had. So I just pick up the cadences, you know, what's going on, because sometimes I'll be like, Hulk smash, he'll say, smoke well. <laughs> 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 Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, that's but real. I totally that's understand what you're saying. Sorry, babe. Go ahead. Um, because I, I used to always wonder, wonder about it. I'm like, how can a man go out here and treat all of these women this way when they have a sister at home or they have a mother at home, but they're out here treating um, other I, people? I promise you. I promise you. I, my mom would date. I'd be like, man, I don't like this fool, man. Mm -hmm. And she'd be like, you 14. I'm like, I don't like him. Why you? I just don't get me wrong. This. Just what I feel, I, he 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 a duck. Like I don't like I don't like something about him ain't right. You hear me? Like, and if he treating you more than what I'm feeling, you could check me as your son. And I think that's what it was. I saw what my mom went through with my dad. I saw what my mom went through dating. So I think it might have trickled to say that's what I've learned from my mother. I don't want to treat a woman like I want my mom, I want you to woman like I want my mom be treated right. Mm -hmm. So that was just me. I'm not saying that was the the best way, the wrong way. I'm just saying, like that's how it was. So I never had two girlfriends, like two. Never. I, no, sir. When I say like I'm dating <laughs> this person and I'm keeping it funky, now, I would, I, I wouldn't tell a woman, this woman A, woman B, these are my girlfriends, but it's still. I wouldn't do it. I like I keep it funky with you and let you know that I got, you know, I'm about, I want to date. You know what I'm saying? Why not keep it clean with her? Mm -hmm. She's she's. If I want a friendship with her, right. I was taught to have a friendship. You know what I'm saying? I believe in quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking gentlemen that saw so different. I just think that I don't have time to remember all these birthdays and all this other stuff going on. I, she like me. If she saw me, I saw her for real. You know what I'm saying? Because it took a special kind of woman to see me. That's how I felt. Yeah. And that was just me. And I'm happy that I did what I did because I didn't waste them type of energies. I knew then as a kid, like, man, you can live with all that there and you got to carry all the energy that come from all them women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She might be dating a killer. She might be dating this one here, guy. AIDS, this one here. You don't know what's out there. And my, like I said, my dad would talk to me like a grown-ass man, bro. He AIDS. 
this was before AIDS mm-hmm. come out. Mm-hmm. Let me just tell you, I'm an old nigga. Mm-hmm. It was a time when there wasn't no AIDS, okay? Mm-hmm. It was here, but they didn't talk about it probably. You know what I'm saying? Before AIDS died. You know what I'm oh, saying? Right. You gotta understand, this This was a time for me. I'm an old cat, mm-hmm. so I'm telling you, before, that was a time when there was no AIDS, and pretty much people didn't talk about them, and you just trying to holler at the girl. Oh, sure. and, and this is what everybody doing. If you watch Straight Outta Compton, that's what Easy and them were doing. They ran out that room, and he had all the girls and all that. They were just showing you that time before before people was talking about AIDS. Once Mike, I think with Magic, Magic, Magic got it. Johnson, mm-hmm. yeah. Magic, and, but did Easy get it for Magic or, or Magic got it? One of them Magic got, got it first. first. But Magic, Magic, first. Magic evidently done beat it with money, but still, Back then, when this happened, I thought that nigga was dead when they told me about it. You know what I'm saying? Magic? <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this, uh, people didn't really pay attention. Magic was the campaign for AIDS. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, or somebody in this skin looking like you, this could happen to you. Who was the campaign and other races for AIDS at that time? Oh, okay, wow. that answers that. Secondly, the campaign got quiet when Magic was able to find that cure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Real talk. So, so that's a whole another conversation. That's a real conversation, yeah. though. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man, like most people, if, if like we talk about a lot. If I, you tell me they robbing around the corner, and I, and I, I, Take my habit, go look at ass around the corner. That's on me. I I might gotta get that. But if I listen to you, what's the wrong with listening to you? You you got love for me. I'm gonna take that and run with it. That's how I felt by dating. I, I was dangerous. You could date the wrong girl. She didn't tell you she got old man. You dead because, you know he tend to tip. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, like. But my, you you, when once you get up, be older. You you meet up with no limit and all that. And I'm not gonna get the music with with, with mm-hmm. my wife. I'm gonna bring trill talk mm-hmm. on here, but. There's a lot of lot more temptation once you start to traveling and going to all these different shows and hanging out with all these different people. People got all this stuff. You smoking on this. You popping this. You know what I'm saying? How did you fight the temptation then? Uh, I almost want to say feeding the choir, boy, because you got me over here. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey man. He's hey, a real good I, dude. I'm a, I'm you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm from a space. But he had a good example. He different. Yeah. He different, yeah. man. I, I, um... How'd you deal I, I with it? I love making music. I, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to tell you that I didn't bump my head. I just, I love music. If you wanted to see me or date me, you had to bring your ass to the studio. Oh, like you my life was in there. Studio head. I wanted to change the, the trajectory of wealth in my, my, my family. So this is where my head was at. I had blinders on me. I wanted to get my mom a house. I wanted to get us out of the goddamn ghetto. Mm-hmm. I wanted to help my dad, you know, get off and the things that he was fighting. I wanted to change the trajectory of wealth. So I was just, man, I was engulfed in that. Man, focus. So I, um, so that's where I was at. So I didn't get caught up. In, and my brother did a lot of things in the street. So I wasn't impressed with a lot of stuff. So when it did come to this and the no limit time, I used to be like, I'm good. I'm, I'm I'm good. Y'all can go ahead. I'm gonna stay in the studio. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm on so many damn songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, you know, a nickel bag went so in the park. I want in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what was, and I loved it because P was like, "Oh, you want to work?" And I'd be like, "Oh, you're damn right. I want to work." That's and cool. I, and he appreciated it because I didn't just show up for a job and we didn't talk about a job. I had there was some things that had to happen for me to get there. I could have went anywhere. I was already a, a success at home locally. I could have went anywhere. I could have did anything. I enjoyed the um, the, the collaborations with KLC. Mia had um, almost was like an ANR scouted me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. KLC kind of scouted me like an ANR. You know, Kenny Abel got me on a song, and then you know we kind of KL brought me up there. P was like. Oh, you know, you know, I'm a new guy here. First, he was like, "Who is this dude you got in my studio?" And then he came, I was like, "Nah, man, I think we need him. We can do some things." And it was over. I, man, I just never, I just didn't stop. I didn't wow. stop. Yeah. You, you did you want to ask something? Yeah, but um, whenever you first said you wanted to do music, did your mama ever said, "No, not that career"? Man, so that's really trippy, right? I've been around UGK since I was 12, like 12 years old, mm-hmm. because of my mama saying. Now look, now you want to do music, and this is your brother's cousin, and he said he would look out for you, so you can go here, you can go hang out with us. She let me have that opportunity because she knew I was serious about it. That's I good. played football in high school, right? 
My mom was like, you got to make a decision. I can't be bringing you here. You can't. You got to make I made a decision to do music full time. You know? And that's yeah. good because most parents, most if you're not parents, most moms be always like, that's not no real career. You can't make no money under. There's too many people out there doing that. Hey, my mom was the thing. first person to call me Fiend when that was going to be my stage name or whatever. She, this was my first cheerleader. She let me go on tours. I seen that's dudes good. drawing cocaine down their nose at 15 years of age sitting on the couch like, okay, that's what they do. With, mm. a, with a deck of cards or right. a single call, you know. And I just, I didn't want none of that. I seen all this growing up. I wasn't, by the grace of God, I wasn't impressed by it. I mm. seen it, so I wasn't impressed by it. So I was like, nah, I'm good. And they respected my space of like, he ain't really, you know, all that. You know what I mean? Like, my piece at where I'm at and my piece then was for the fact, I think, really off of my brother and my dad, seeing what my mom was over. Coming. You know, my mom did hair in her house. You hear know I me? Mean? Like, we had a shotgun house. My mom would be, work, she worked domestically, cleaning homes, come home and do hair for, you know, for the ladies. And I'm sitting up there, my mom doing hair. These women walking over my bedroom to go get the hair done in the kitchen. So I used to see the things that my mom was going through. And if I didn't have that, I mean, who's to say? I think that was one of my biggest motivations to just want to change life, period. Uh, the thing that I want to know, because it seems like you have a lot of things matched out from a young age coming all the way up. You already knew what you wanted and knew what you didn't want and so forth. Um, but I know the devil comes at us in different ways. He always finds a weakness mm -hmm. somehow to come at mm -hmm. you. So tell me about a time when you were younger, um, something that came at you and really, you know, stumbled you a little bit, but you still overcame it. What made me stumble and I overcame? I was a young man and got abducted. Right, I was laying in a house with 12 other men, duct taped up, and I'm seeing silence is being put on gun and everybody's about to be murdered in this house. Right? How old were you? I had to be 17, 17, 18. And I realized that I couldn't control this, mm -hmm. and this was just off affiliation. Wow. Right? I could have went home. I was driving home, going over the bridge, going to return my mom's twin, her sister car, mm -hmm. right? Going to bring my Auntie Maggie car back. I don't want to be married with me. She, she let me use the car for a little bit. And I get this page, and I look at the page, and I'm like, well, damn, I can go home and call back, or do I just turn right back around? Mm -hmm. I say, man, I need the money to pay Ice Mike. He produced some beats for me, right? Yeah. Let me go back and get the money. I could get back doing my thing. I turn back around. I pull up to this house. And I see, uh, I pull up to the house and I see somebody kind of like jog off, you know? I'm like, man, who scary ass that ran? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I get out the car, boom, close the door, walk up to the door, knock on the door. Uh, oh, all right, man, walk on the door, gun to my hip, fiend, don't say nothing, I'll kill you right now. I, I, I'll I swear, call you by name. I swear to God, I'll kill you right now. You knew who it was too? Of course I did. Okay. Right? So I was like, um, okay. Wow. He walked me to this bedroom, opened the door, all I heard was, Tapes. You know, these cats being duct tape, and I was just like, you know, like, shit, right? Right? I'm next. Now I'm getting tape put on me. I'm being laid on the floor next to these men. All these men were older than me, right? Man, I'm just laying, I'm laying there, right? I'm laying, I remember what I had on and everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm laying there, and I'm, I'm, I'm so mad with myself. I can't express it. Right, I'm just mad with myself that my mama gotta discover me like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm so pissed with myself. Oh, I'm so pissed That's with myself. That's all you can think about. That's all I can think about. My mom opened up the obituary. I'm so pissed with myself. You know what I'm saying? While everything is going on, I'm damn near blocking out because I'm 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 furious with myself, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you could have went home, mm -hmm. right? And I'm pissed for the fact that. This person could have not contacted me, mm -hmm. right? Choices. Man, Choices. Huh, bro. So I lay there, I'm laying there, and I'm like, I'm just gonna pray, you hear me? I'm just, I'm just gonna pray. And it makes the praying, uh, I hear one guy tell a guy, man, um, oh man, um, nobody ain't gonna discover y'all for a minute. You know what I'm saying? You know, I heard the silence, get on the gun, and let one round off, it sounded like, like that, you know what I'm saying? Into a pillow, you hear me? And like, I'm like, okay, nobody ain't gonna hear this neither, you know what I'm saying? So I went to pray, and I was so discombobulated, I couldn't complete the Our Father prayer or Hail Mary. Mm. Funny thing, I was mixing them together, you hear me? <laughs> Our Father, <laughs> Hail Mary, I was running them back and back, you hear me? I'm laying there, and I'm like, man, like, okay, like, I, I, I wasn't even like, I don't even think I had a chance to be scared, 
You know what I'm saying? Not on no big boy. You know, I, I it was happening so I couldn't even get I couldn't get scared of it happened mm. so fast, right? So I'm just landing like, man, ain't this about something, right? And then I'm seeing one person in there that I know that has been living a certain lifestyle, mm. so they're not gonna hesitate to burn his ass up, right? So who's gonna have favor for us uh, or? Uh, have reserve for me. Mm. What's gonna make me so special right now? And um, by the grace of the Creator, <laughs> some other things happen. I got beat with a bat. You feel me? How did you get out of that situation? We'll, we'll have to talk another time. Okay. Oh, okay. You but know, you did make it out. I'm here today. Man, you know, that, that, that's I'm something here, else. Because somebody here, hear that story, you don't supposed to be here. And, but it showed that you have choices every day. Whenever you know, you know, the devil gonna come at you mm -hmm. in a hundred different ways. He knows our weaknesses. You have to know, okay, something as simple as just a phone call. You're not expecting all of that. But each and every time when we divert from whatever we intended to do, you know that it's something, it, anything can happen. The reality of it, these gentlemen was bickering amongst themselves that I was in the company of, right? Wow. And they were spending money and had it someone investing and they weren't they wasn't getting the, the work done mm -hmm. and they and they were bickering amongst themselves and they was not taking this money being spent being serious mm -hmm. right one of the greatest lessons i've ever encountered right and the reality so you ain't got to wait till part two <laughs> it was end up being a lesson right I, I never favored myself to say, oh, if it, I wasn't there, you know, I just kept it from myself that by the grace of creator, my ancestors end up being a lesson. A lesson learned. Right? Because I end up, the lights went dark, right? And I realized that I wasn't as taped up as tight as I thought. Oh. Right? So I sat in quiet, untaped, I took it off and sat in quiet just sitting there while these men were just you know, like these dudes are begging for their lives, bro. Like it got serious. The guy was like, hey man, you guys owe me some money, man. Which one of y'all family members love you enough to come bring me my money? You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing grown men begging, pleading for their lives, right? I'm seeing grown men saying, let me call my girlfriend, right? Like, that's wild. You gotta call and danger your woman, mm -hmm. right? To get you out of here. <laughs> like I, I saw this, it made me bite my tongue and shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it made me grow up quick to know that I don't care how bad you are, I don't care how not bad you are, you could fall into some shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it ended up being a lesson and I just was like, this is trippy. And I saw a life in front of me and I knew from there on, you know what I'm saying? Is it that worth it to you just to be around this? You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing to smoke D. Like what's something that that transpired in your life, and it, it, I don't know. You don't know where to start. He like I don't know. I just don't know where to start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like at a time in your life where you came to a roadblock or you came to a stumble, you came to a place where you shouldn't have been, or you came to a place where um, you it had changed a life. Change yeah. your life. Probably uh, like and how you over, cause you, you overcame because you're still here right now, so you overcame it. Because people are watching this show, kids are watching the show, adults are watching shows that's going through um, choices right now that could end them up in a casket. Um, a place I shouldn't have been. I guess it depends on, like for me, it was a lot of places I shouldn't have been, but the first place I can remember that I shouldn't have been is pulling a pulling a gun on my stepdad at age eight. Eight years old? Yes, ma'am. To protect my mom, right? My family come from a family of pistol shooters and guns and mean, you know, old country way type mm -hmm. deal. You know, and the men are the protectors. We're not allowed to look below the waist of the women in our family. Mm -hmm. So no, no. And I'm just a what I was raised to be. A protector, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's any any child, any male child, or any child. Someone hit your mom, you had an understanding of a child. And, you know, you see people with guns around you, you understand what guns can do. Mm -hmm. And so, I guess I was kind of like, <clears throat> it was more of a mental incarceration, trying to figure things out that I didn't understand, and my mind couldn't it couldn't register them. 
because I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know the word to go with, you know, PTSD or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my first understanding of fear because at AJ, I was fearful, but then, like, I knew in my heart I was going to shoot him. I, I feel that way now, but my mom didn't let me. She got in front of my mom back there. What's up, mom? Um, yeah, she got in front of him. And that confused me. You know, as a child, okay, if not just somebody's beating your mom up, you won't kill him. Why are you standing in front of somebody that's beating you up, right? But it wasn't about him. It was about, about me. You. Mm -hmm. And it took me years. So those kind of traumatizing things, they, they like, psychologically, they just put you in a place. So you already kind of just set up based on the way the system has your neighborhood, the, the social security, all of these things, system, system, systematic things set up in play to even aid, you know what I'm saying, and be a catalyst for you to get, you know, to a place to where you can, um, you know, be, be, be served a bad way of life. That's something, the whole time you're saying that, it, it's the only th he always tell me, I watch too many movies. I'm like, I've seen that in a movie, exactly what you just described. Really? Where a, a kid will pull a gun on the stepdad or the boyfriend or whoever, and the mom mm -hmm. went in front. And he was mad. The same thing. Exactly the same thing. She was trying to prevent him throwing his life his away, life away off of raw emotion. Exactly. And reacting off of raw emotion. You know what I'm saying? She, exactly. she was willing to save your life and through mm -hmm. no matter what you just experienced, you were still more important than that situation. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you know what, bro? She fixed my it's here. I mean, we was just downstairs. Mm -hmm. You seen how the dudes came we was just here. I'm just saying this because I'm a real time thinker, mm -hmm. right? Now I noticed the man is sitting there and he didn't took a drink and the drink didn't took him. Mm -hmm. See? So he figured he smooth and he dab debonair to where he see a bunch of women over here. Maybe he drunk, maybe he blind or whatever he is, but he came wrong. His spirit was wrong. Absolutely wrong. And I reacted in a way that I don't want to react no more. Mm -hmm. You know? That incarceration, it took my smiles, it took the emotions that I wanted to use. The hug. I don't my mom ain't give us no hugs. We ain't got time for no hug. You better you know, because she's trying to raise men. Right. Mm -hmm. We couldn't come back home with a loss. Mm -hmm. You go out there, you win. Don't come back home losing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that puts you in a situation to where, you know, it's unnatural. Because my father should be telling me that, mm -hmm. not her. And she, God bless her soul, and broke daylight to be dark to provide a way for us. And we had a great life. My mom full of bread. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't here. She didn't have time. She spent time working. And I got, you know, whoever she was mad to, I had to be scared of him until I was 16. Then I really tried to kill him. Like, for real, for real, to the point she had to leave him, right? So it's that kind of aggression that's carried over from a childhood trauma to a situation right now. I don't like to play. Mm. It's a bunch of women over here, and here you come, yo, drunk behind over here, slip little go gobble. Man, you better go. Yeah, for mm. it, it, like yeah, go. You, I don't, you don't even you know, want this, and I don't want to be like that, bro. No, I get I want it, man. A more diplomatic way to handle situations when I perceive them as a threat, right? But let me ask you a question, and this goes to all of you. Um, do you think in situations like that, it would have been um, helpful if or hurtful? Because when you're dealing with boys. It's a thin line, especially with a woman. You don't want to turn them soft. Mm -hmm. You're trying to make them into men. But, like, to turn around and explain to a child, you know, the reason why I did this is because of this. I don't know if your mom explained to you at that moment in time. Of course, after, you know, she de-escalated the situation, it's not because of him. It's because of you. Right. You know, did she explain that at that moment in time? Because like, communication I'm, isn't usually I'm never not, there in I'm the black sure. family. I'm not sure my mom is mean as a bag of rice. Well, yeah, because you, you get I'm your ass sure. whooped doing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you doing right. that. That's that right there get your yeah, ass whooped. I'm not sure. I you think know, I just figured yeah. it out well, First of all, like, I didn't. No, the reason what why you I'm doing grabbing that damn gun anyway? <laughs> you're going to get my granddad and them and grandma and them whoop you for doing anything. You, you're you going to get a whooping even though you done it. Mm. And your brother, too, if he were with you. Whatever, whoever in there can get it. You know what I mean? Right. At eight, oh, man, everybody getting a whooping. And the dog too, <laughs> whoever he get hit, all that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I get it. You know, uh, mom didn't explain it. My mom shot at my dad. I was five, so I get it. You know, like I was standing there. 
Well, but if we're not like four. But if we're not left with our own imagination and trying to figure stuff out, because a lot of times, even as adults, when somebody do something, say your spouse, and she reacts a certain way, in your mind you're thinking that's the reason why, but it's really not the reason why, and that can make you react differently mm -hmm. instead of actually coming to her and say, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. And having her explain herself honestly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's miscommunication in any situation, in any household that causes, you know, that outcome. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I was asking that. Yeah. Tim Smoe used to say communication rules the nation, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to have patience to want to have that. Exactly. Some people don't feel like they are obligated to tell you nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of what they learned. Yes. Their parents didn't teach, didn't, didn't Correct. you know, Correct. talk to them. So Correct. why am I trying to do this Correct. to you? Correct. Let's, let's, Correct. Come on, man. We can talk about this music, man. This trill talk, no pill talk, man. This guy right here, number one blogger in, the t in oh, Texas. Oh, um, he gonna put us sorry. out there. You know what I'm saying? I know how to get on his page. I just bring him on the show. Right. He gonna repost <laughs> us all day long. You know what I'm saying? The whole conversation because you think he got some good questions and answers. Oh, no, nah, I don't usually give you now. You, that's you over with. Saying, okay. You know what I'm saying? You just gonna sit here and act right today and talk okay. to these guys, man. I heard you, man. How you doing, Trill Talk? No Peel Talk. Man, I'm good. How y'all doing, man? Say, man, we're gonna get into the music. This dude here is a music guru. Mm -hmm. He studied both of y'all. I ain't never seen nobody can break it down like him and GD down there. GDP. These two <laughs> guys right here is my number two. One and two how I go to a different, I'm in Louisiana and Texas and Mississippi too. He right there on you. Whatever yeah. he doing, he done seen it. So we about to get into it, man. You being from that no limit area. You being from the UGK era. You know what I'm saying? Really Listen, same. man, we, hey, we love y'all, bro. So we about to get into this music, man. So you, how did you first link with uh, uh uh, UGK, Pimp C, Bond B. Um, short story even shorter. Um, I had a friend that rapped from Crystal Springs, Mississippi named Telly Funches and he was a part of a group called the Black Knights. They got a deal with a guy named Cal Burden out of Lansing, Michigan, Crazy Cal Records. And so me, I was in the streets but these were my partners that I hung with and you know, they wanted me to come for one reason or another. Short story even shorter, we got there and we did the EP. And he had a little son named Calvin Jr. that was crying and he wanted to do a song, but you know, he's a child, nobody's paying attention to him. So I just took, you know, like the kids, and we made a song. And um, they listened to the song, they were like, you all really do this for real. Like, no, and the name of the song was like the first song I ever made called A Pimp Mac Hustler. Okay. But I put the, his son in the intro. You remember the old Tussie Road Park? Come commercial? on, man. Yeah. Murder, murder. I made some street stuff to that. We came back down south, and uh, they had a club called Underground in Jackson, Mississippi, and just so happened the Underground Kings was coming to the Underground. So I had a, a packet. You know, back then they used to put the, the photo, the cassette tape, you know, and I put a little weed in there that I had from Michigan that nobody <laughs> knew was existed yet. So I, you know, gave it to uh, Stokes. Shout out to Stokes, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Stokes, club promoter, show promoter, Mississippi. I gave it to him, and he gave it to them. And so, you know, back then they had the pages and whatnot. We riding around and working off the pager, and he asked me to come to the club. And so when I came to the club, I'm thinking, okay, somebody wants some of this good new weed I got, right? And so when I got there, big security guard dude, I look up, come on, whoa, whoa, whoa. I go out to the back, <clears throat> I get in the limousine, okay, let me see. I get in on this door, it's a girl here, it's a girl there, it's a girl there. Bond is over there on that seat, Pimp is here. And so they were listening to the music, right? Smoking. Me, I'm thinking they want to smoke something, I'm still on trying to get my money. <laughs> so I pull out some extra, got the girl, she rolling it up. And he played the songs, and um, he played the song I did with the little child. He was like, well, who is this? And he said, man, that's Jim. You want to come to Texas for a couple of weeks? Yeah. But I had to ask my mom, because I was in college, right? Um, I ended up going for two weeks and ended up staying two years. And Ooh. you know, I moved in with Pimp, because I was from Jackson. So I stayed with him two years, and in that process, I learned how to produce. He showed me a lot of stuff about the music. Because I, I have a, a, a way with words, like, you know, double entendres and whatnot, if you will. So a lot of the times when we was in there creating, I was able to help him with hooks. You know what I'm saying? Like the policemen are your friends. Yes, sir. Stuff like that. You know, I was there. 
just sounded like one day yeah, I was there. Because we shared music. I had my own talent, but not like his, you see. And he helped me enhance what I was doing. Wow. So that's how that's how it began. The first song that UGK had, ever had was here was the front, back, side to side. Yeah. And that is what led me back to Mississippi, to the jealousy and the resentment and the jail time. Yeah, so we're going to get into that. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to I want to hear about that. But I, you said something earlier. You said that you were some kind of way cousins, cousins, cousins with, cousins with which one, Cam. Bun or Pimp? No, nah, or somebody on the nah, camp. No, DJ Lil Daddy is known as okay. Baby, Baby Daddy. T. Ba- okay, right? and Lil Daddy yeah. used to come down. To it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. My mom was and, like, um, um, Baby T, um, your brother Kevin. This is cousin. You know what I'm saying? And um, and my my brother had different fathers biologically, but my dad, rest in peace, you couldn't tell him Kevin wasn't his own. Already, that's where it be. Um, So um, he was like, he let me come around. It just so happened that uh, little daddy would go hang out by Devious and meet by Devious, and uh, UGK be meeting him over there. I didn't have the honor of meeting Smoke at the time, but it it was Bun and Pimp. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like a a, just a man, a student. And how were you? I had to be anywhere between 12 and 14. Wow, you were very young. Yeah, and I was just a kid in the corner just listening and observing. You know, I just knew this was a Soaking group. up game. Oh, man. Like, That's what they call man. it. Oh, but you were having that game too, wasn't I, I, was, I was writing, you know, but I, I wasn't like, I, mean, I wasn't, you know, uh, busting nothing for nobody. Yeah. I just loved it so much, and I just was just chilling. Like I said, soaking up game. And, um, and uh, my cousin was like, he used to hear Baby T used to hear Lil Daddy used to hear the rhymes. Yeah. But past that, I just was out of respect. That was, you know, I'm going to just be quiet, let these men Damn. do the thing. And I was telling Bun earlier, I was like, you, you know, before I can even finish it, he was like, he said, I'm saying, like, you know, you just never know who's going to be who. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, oh, my God. Years, God. years later, um, bro, I was in the tattoo parlor. Uh, about to get no limit records tattered on my arm, right? Mac had Mac had just got out. Shout the, out to Mac. Shout out to Mac. Mac Fisher. He um just got out the chair. I got in the chair. It's like uh, I got a call from the studio, and it was like we're gonna do you doing your album does with their family, and I was just tripping like uh, they're like Bun and Pimp here, man. We're gonna do a song for you on your album. I jumped, sprung out the chair. You thought they had springs that pushed me out the chair. Jumped out the chair, jumped in my car, hauled ass. Uh, to the No Limit Studios and knocked out Down South Slanging, which is slanging with UGK, part of UGK, you know, Smoke wow. was there. And uh, yeah, bro, like, it uh, it all is super trippy to me, you know, to this day, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you do have choices. Yeah. You know, God will protect you, the ancestors will definitely protect you, right. but you gotta play your part too. Right. Man, really so th- this, this front, back, side to side, man, you know, uh, that, that's one right there for the record, like, like, you, how was it like even, you know, putting that song together? I got to get, I got to thank God for DJ Bird. That's okay, song shout out DJ Bird. Yeah. Shout, shout out DJ Bird. Bird. Yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. Bird, yeah. Smitty, I'm, I'm sorry y'all couldn't make it, bro. But we're going to keep moving. Um, I didn't know what Penn was doing to me at the time. He was tricking me in the training. Like, yeah. he, like, I don't know how he did it. He never liked anything. I did. Oh, that's Bobo. <laughs> That's what the same thing Boosie said. Say Boosie. everything yeah, you got yeah, wasn't yeah. good enough. Everything. Nah, that, man, that ain't jamming. You know, he just had that way about it. But the kind of love he showed me, though, you know what I mean? And as I watched things grow, because you got to understand, before any of the stuff materialized and grew, I was there. It's like stuff I forgot. And so we were in New Orleans. I Reburis was his name, I believe. I don't know what to do. Gumbo Funk Studio. We were at okay. some studio situation. I think I heard that name before. Yeah, and they they like he had all the executives. Like I said on other interviews, they had the tags in there playing games, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, for 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 one reason or another, they had me in a corner situation and they was like talking to me, yeah, you know, talking like they was trying to make a deal with Pimp. He snapped out. Y'all get away from blah, 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 blah. You know, he really went off. The bird, oh, Smoke, we gonna do it. Bill wants you to come in and do a verse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A verse? <laughs> I went in there, and I was like, you know, like like Pippi Long's talking. Uh, uh, tight white interior. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
DJ Bird, like, he tried it once. He tried it twice. And, man, he just, he ain't got the end. DJ Bird took me out there. We was drinking. Shout out to DJ Bird. Crazy Horse. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. a beer called Crazy yeah. Horse. Yeah. Red Horse on it. Yeah, I remember oh, that. Oh, man. We got out there. He put them cables on me. I come back in there, man, like, boy, what is it? Who, who, who? What, <laughs> what? And I, I went and I just let my energy go, man. And then it turned into a hit for them, for us. It was. Right? It, 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 but, it was but I, great. Yeah, and, and I owe all of that to DJ Bird, man, because he is really like the glue. He still is and was like the glue to everybody. Every situation, he just brought happiness and love to it. You know wow. what I'm saying? I'm trip, yo. That's I, crazy. I was working as an A&R for Atlantic Records, mm -hmm. right? And Pimp had just came home. T.I. was working on the album. And uh, Mike Karen was like, man, what can we do? For T.I. and knowing UGK together like this, I said, let's get them to redo a UGK song. Right? Wow. Right? Check us wow. out. Check us out. I was, man, bro, I was talking about stroking some work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I said, man, so the guy with Pimp, they got Manny Fresh to redo front, back, side, and side. Got both of them on the song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, that's crazy. Wow. You, so you, you know, was there when they redid no, it? Like, yeah. in real time, like right now, I just gotta shake your hand hey, because they got me a chin. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Once I realized what I could be utilized for, right? I I, I was able to do that at Atlantic Records. Wasn't a little chick so either, bro. I, I know better. It was I, not I, a little chick. I know what everybody got paid. Smoke. Okay. Right. I know what the budget was. Smoke. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, he didn't know a lot of people. I introduced him to Gooch. I'm, I was able to make moves for my people to get check stroke to him. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about, yeah, bro. Right. That's what it's about now. And like, I'm just listening in this interview. The key point and the key thing that I call because I'm more an observer than the channel being it. Communication. For mm -hmm. sure. Communication. If we can learn how to do that properly, then we can express ourselves in a more direct way. And you know what I mean? More than just text message or the fast super information, you know, put the phone down sometimes. Extra top. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Trill talk, what 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 you know about Fiend, man? Let, let, let's go man, on. I know. You, Get started out with, you started out with Big Boy, right? Big Boy right. I started out actually with um I started out actually with um a brother of mine named Musa. He didn't yet have a label for his I mean a name for his label. Um, but Big Boy was my first independent success. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, it was. Yeah. Right. Wow. Go ahead. And then, like, like from there, like, you kind of, you transferred, like, you went to, I think it was No Limit after that. Like, it was, this one in front of was it, what, year 2000? It, no, no, no. It was, it was uh, no, not May not, 5th, 1998. 95, 98, yeah. Right. Yeah, and um, when you came up with that, like, it, it was a change. Like, I seen, like, uh, Really, kind of you and Mystical, kind of like y'all, kind of bleed it together like a little bit, like on songs together, like now, like the Snoop. Yeah, Wolf that's and that's like that. crazy. Um, when I got the Big Boy records, Mystical pulled yeah, me in so. the back of the uh, uh, Chuck, the owner of um, Big Boy Records. Rick, yeah. He pulled me in the back of his house, and he realized I was a new guy at Big Boy Records. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed the baddest motherfucker last single, and I remember I never forget this. He had the nylon. Uh, undershirts they get from Soul Train, you hear me? Yeah, he had some khakis on. He was like, he rolled a little joint. He like, man, man, you gonna run this thing, dog? You hear me? I'm telling you, dog, you crazy. I heard your single, man, man, you about to run this thing. And I was like, just met him my first time meeting him, yeah. right? I like, huh, bro? And um, so we ran it, and that was that. The Big Boy Records, um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it off like I wanted to. Um, Sice gave me the production that he can give me, um, at the time. But um, I know we could have went more in depth. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, that's yeah, why man. I asked about the mystical thing because I know he was over there too. And it's so, like, yeah. I was like, how did that? You know, like from y'all transferring over mm -hmm. there, then y'all like rejoining back when y'all got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I was, I was helping. Believe it or not, I was, I was like bringing tracks in, instrumentals in, and uh, I like this and Sice might like it. And every once in a while, don't get me wrong, he did his yeah. own thing. But certain things I, I was discovering, like, you know, I had A&R potential then picking out tracks. I did writing where whoever may need it writing for at yeah. the time. However to play my part, not 100% of the bodies, but just, you yeah. know, increments of stuff, right? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Right, so, so um, yeah, No Limit was different because um, he had this audience 
And he had this production. He found and he tapped into his sound with Beats by the Pound. Yeah. And um, I was working with another company that was looking to do a third party deal. And uh, he was like, you know what I'm saying? He's not really into doing third party deals. I had to respect his mind for that. You hear me? But um, he had a an amount that he wanted if we could match it, that he'd be willing to do it. We walked in that quarter million dollar cash. He saw we were serious. And I did Don't Fuck Around for the body soundtrack yeah. and everything else was over. Yeah. Man, yeah. Look, you look. took the next question. Oh, man, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'll ask about the Don't Fuck Around. Hey, Ray, hey, hey, listen. A Ray on the track, man. I just interviewed him, man. And I want to say, man, you, you're a dope dude, bro. Like, listen, man, listen, man. Let me, let me tell you something, man. God is good, bro. Like, like when it, me and this dude got the interview and they ain't came out yet. But it was crazy because I was coming to see you, Nick, you know, within days, man, you've been talking. Right. And for the story that he co told me, man, on this show is crazy, man. You know, God confirms things when you when you link in with certain people. And he, he kind of confirmed that that, that that I needed to rock out with you through that. You know what I mean? He did that uh, Glorilla, uh, right, the, the, that song, the and, but song. he told me about how you gave him his his way out, you know, out of the city and helped him. Oh, he told you about yeah, that? Yeah, he told me about everything. Everything? Thought, yeah, for <laughs> <laughs> That's about the good part about him. He could have been in a lot of trouble, but you helped him to get his life together. Right, bro. right, man. And that's yeah, the part um, that I really care about because that's the part that counts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout, shout out to Jackson, Mississippi, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I can say. Um, yeah, it's very dangerous for young guys out there right now, and so you know that's a part of that's a part of what you know part of what we do. Philanthropical things. I have a five hundred one c three situation to where it allows me to involve myself in prison reform and voters registration and expungement because I know that we're fighting an invisible war with silent weapons. Yeah, I know who the enemy is, mm -hmm. right? And so you have to be. Pretty much to get ourselves together and collectivize in the right way that we need to. Every black male, whether it's your child or not, you, you have to be sort of a street father, if you will. Because there's no discipline. There's no male guidance. There's no rules. That's why the kids ain't scared of nothing. Avery had the real Yugoslavian hyenas hunting him. Wow. The real one, not, 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 you know? And so it's those kind of things because I, I, I thrive in the ghetto. I thrived in there. I live in there. Man, but they that's, respect me. that's so. what you got to understand. That's why you went through what you went through and all the stuff you went through benefits those youngsters. Shout like out that, to man. Avery, man. Yeah. Keep doing it. Yeah, he working, man. <laughs> Keep putting he working. number one tracks out, bro. If you can see this, man, that's, that's what we talking about, bro. You ain't there no more. You know how to play it. You know how it go, bro. Thank you for shouting me out behind closed doors, and I'm gonna just give you respect openly. That's hard. Want. That's hard. Yeah. Well, he it's coming out. It, it ain't behind closed doors. It's, it's a video coming. <laughs> oh, he did a video. He did a whole interview yeah. with me. Oh, he gonna clip this yeah. and put part of that. Oh, with yeah. that one. <laughs> That's why I get it. Yeah, yeah. He it just ain't came out yet, but he definitely did an interview. Well, I know you're a man of God, so thank God. <laughs> 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 but I just it. know we talked and, and you man, know you it was it was on real. up and up, bro. You got the yeah. real. See, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't even say like most of the time people talk about people they gonna go and run and say something. The fire is a bad. Yeah. But when you can go and you can say okay, somebody spoke good about you. Yeah. That's what we need the communication. Somebody in that and I'm honored in that way. Yeah. You know that's that's more payment than. You know anything yeah. to invest in a person? That's what. You know, that's and the, the part. Paid off like right, that, yeah. right. Yeah, and to see that he's making moves and he still yeah. he's flourishing in and his he career. He's trying to grow. You. He still remember. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't, did. forget, yeah. he didn't yeah. forget where he come from. That's for sure. Um, like let, let's talk about that riding dirty for a second, man. Like right. I need to understand like how that even happened. Your your vocals was on there and you was at the front of that thing, man. Uh, every time you, it, it wouldn't have been. It would have been the same yeah. without it. No, no. But see, first, let's be first, real. See, when I first heard that Ryan Dirt, I was a little kid then. Who you when thought I it was? Heard, I thought that was Bun B. Bun B. Yeah, Bun B. Then, 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 then after that, 
you know how people be talking, it was like, ah, oh, this Bun B brother, he locked up and all this. I'm like, dang, I don't know. You know, but it wasn't no, we didn't have no way to get the information. We didn't know who they all that was, we man. We just listened to them. We listened to the boys, they sound similar, stuff like that. Right. Then when I got older, they was like, ah, oh, that smoke deal, you know, he was locked up and all that. And I'm like, dang. So he sent them, like back then, you was able to send them, like. Jeans. Yeah, well, no, Jeans. Yeah, that, that was, that was, uh, I went through a lot of trouble for that. Oh, yeah. Let's just say it like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah um, let me see how this happened. I was in the prison, and like, let me say this, like I was completely smoke D. Like, I, smoke D is still a part of me, but it's not the total circumference yeah, yeah. of who I've evolved to now, yeah. right? Let's let's understand that. But smoke D kept getting me in trouble. Yeah. Because I, I didn't know about power. I had power to get people and influence them to move, yeah. but I didn't have a sense enough to know when, when where, and how to do them so yeah. it wasn't power. Yeah. And so, thank God I didn't have no control over my power. This wouldn't have not happened at the time because I had a DAT player and I just sent them a DAT player to let them know I was doing okay. Pimp did, he was the one that took it and chopped it up. They was going to use a so bunch of stuff. So it's one long? It's one, one yeah, it's, it's, it's a long, some DAT tapes out there now, somebody hiding from me. <laughs> and you know, I ain't eat yet either, yeah. so. You ain't eat yet. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, and, and it was that thing. I never intended it. To be like that. It's kind of happened. I just sent it to him to let him know, man, I'm in here eating steak and shrimp. Hey, what you talking <laughs> So you, you just riding. You just riding and sending that out. Yeah, I'm just in there. I'm in small, there. I'm smoking. They treating me like a king. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I ain't have to do nothing. Really, you want this, you want that. Because to them, I, I came in a celebrity. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Right? And I misused it to a point to where... Used for the wrong time. Yeah, and then, then, but I got it right, though. I got yeah. my wrong right. I had no choice. Yeah. You know? I think. I was listening to him walking to school. <laughs> oh, yeah. On a cassette, and them uh, interludes, I'm trying to tell you. Right, they made the album. Bro, That's listen, I was album. walking on, I'm walking to school because I ain't want to get jumped catching the regular bus. You get your ass jumped on the bus, you got to kick that ass with him. These on your feet. You can, yeah. yeah, if you fast, you, you might yeah, write. Right. So I was, I, I had that cassette walking to school with this UGK. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, bro, like, that riding dirty. Here's another thing, as I'm trying to tell you, around. I sat outside the House of Blues in my partner's white Lexus, and I wrote, which is a classic song to this day called If I Don't Gotta. Yeah, on Silk and Shocker album, yeah. I wrote that off of Diamonds and Wood. So well, you wrote that song? I wrote it off of that. I, I sat outside the in the car, Wood Grain steering wheel, and this white Lexus, my partner, white Lexus, he always wanted me to drive. I didn't know what the hell I was about. But shout out to Shane, and I'm sitting out, and I wrote that. I used to run it back. I had a knack for writing over other people's words. Like, we'll block out what you're saying, that. right? When you think about yeah. it, them songs kind of sound similar now that you said that. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, like, I'm, for the I'm putting that out there to you. I'm I know trying what to tell you, about. like, I, so I'm saying, like, man, I did this with Outkast album. I did this Riding Dirty, that song, and it had to be done. Right. It had to be done. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, like, to talk to you when we first met. I know you probably like, man, where this dude coming from? Like I said, you you've you've been in, in here in my in my ears for a yeah, very, yeah, very long yeah. time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So out of respect, I just wanted to just reciprocate. I've accomplished a lot of things off of certain spaces in my own life. Me gardens music. Yeah. You hear know I me? Mean? How did you get your name Fing? Uh, my partner Rivers out the Tim War. He thought my voice tone or rapping sounded like Rock Kim when we was young. And he said, Rich. Rich, bro, you need to be some kind of fiend, dog. You sound like you need to be like some kind of fiend, bro. You hear me? So I ended up uh, going by anti-fiend. Go figure that right. Yeah. So, and when I got the big boy, I had a session with Sice and uh, his guitar players, uh, guitar player at Sound Service Studios. And uh, we ended up dropping a single to Baddest and Mouth Alive, and we cut the anti off. and. That was fiend. Wow. Yeah. I got to ask you another question because Boz will get, he, Boz will be upset with That's me. That's my guy, bro. Boz told me when I'm sitting down with no limit people, mm -hmm. make sure you ask them, let's ask them what, what, did, what, did, what did I bring to take? What did they think of me? What did he brought to the table? Yeah, what did you think of him? Oh, when you man. think of Boz, what, what, what comes to mind? Man, man. Big Boz, Mr. shout out. Mr. Boswell brought to the table integrity. He brought another perspective of gangster. You hear me? Clean cut gangster. He brought a gentleman. He brought class. You know what I'm saying? 
he was wearing uh, tailor-made clothes then. I saw guys looking at him thinking that his clothes were a little too snug. I'm like, you you don't really get that stuff tailored. It was it was the, it was fit for him. And that's what he brought, you heard me? And the wisdom, man. Boz told me stuff like it stuck with me, bro. I, man, Boz told me, say Feeney, <laughs> you know, a good soldier prepares for war during a time of peace. You hear me? <laughs> you hear me? He used to just be putting like, we used to have these one-on-ones. He used to just, man, he used to always keep it clean with me. And I think he got that. You hear me? Where I'm from, I was taught to be a hero and a monster. Everybody can't just see you and know everything you've been through. You can't wear everything. You can scare people off, bro. You know what I'm saying? And for the fact that if you don't know me on a dark street, you shouldn't know me on a dark street. You feel me? So Boz brought that to me, and it was okay. He made it okay. When I turned in there's when they were a family, Boz reached me a car magazine and told me to pick me something out of there. You know? Wow. I, you know, like I said, when we sit down and talk, I just know... That's something. I, every time I sit down with one of y'all, man, no matter He's which solid. one it is, he go, I He's say, solid. I got to ask, man. I, I started with KL, and then, you know, even KL, man, like when I was interviewing him in Baton Rouge, mm-hmm. man, you were supposed to link, uh, you know, he he would talk highly about you. Man. Love bro. you, bro. Like, bro. like you got a lot of love around you. Hey, bro. man, God, man. I, I've been, oh, I'm so blessed. I've been preserved my whole life. That's why I don't want to. I don't want to play it off. I'm not bringing preacher. I ain't no preacher in my reach. I just want to keep it funky with people. Like my brother passed away. My village took me under their wing. And I really, pre- I believe to this day, they preserved me. Like they protected me from all the BS that I could have got into being miserable that my brother died and, and, and just sad and just down and out. And I think that, I think I want to tell that because they may have some people be trying to help people and they may not be accepting the help. You hear me? I, I performed at American Music Awards, right? Now I had this Rolex, dial, Rolex, this Pave dial, flushed out Rolex, and a Jubilee band. This early, right? Boz looked at me and said, "Say, Phoenix, your other wrist look a little, look a little, little dry, bro. You know." He took off a Cuban link. I ain't never seen a Cuban link. All right, Cuban link. It looked like water was laying on his Cuban link, bro. You know I mean? And I know his quality, his taste of things. It wasn't to be played with. He spent thirty thousand dollars for a bracelet. This was I know how he was he was moving, you feel me? That boy took this bracelet out, say, say Fiend, put this on, you hear me? He said, Ooh, and it fit? Yeah, man, go out there, rock it, you hear me? Rocked it, we did make it so on for American Music Awards. I came back, you know, like I was taught, I'm looking for Boz to give him the bracelet. He looked at me and said, Man, you did your damn thing, man. I said, Man, take this goddamn bracelet, you hear me? He said, Nah, baby, you keep that, yeah. You keep that, man. Wow, yeah. wow. And that's the type of gentleman, not to say that he had to give, I mean, he was already dropping gems on me, and I didn't take that for granted, bro. He was, he was, he was, a, he was somebody special then, bro, to, be, to grow up in New Orleans and to be this type of a man, this type of individual, to carry his own persona of who he was. He was special then, bro. Wow, what did, and I gotta ask you this, what did you think about Snoop when he came over? To Snoop, first of all, Snoop, is the reason I feel that I know it was okay to get married and be here with my extraordinarily awesome <laughs> wife to know I could be married in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I never would have thought I'd have got them lessons in hip hop, rap music. It's hard. Snoop is the absolute shit to me. Snoop is gonna always Snoop be. Snoop number one all time. Bro, he is the absolute uh, end rap, all. Rapper? The, rapper he's he's, he's more than rap. For, really? really? He's been here through all these generations. Uh, and, he's still, and, he's, and he's he wanted to do that. Not lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying not lyrics. I'm saying like just rough life. Oh, you know, I got clear. a little, I got a little caught up because you know I'm no, in the south, man. Nah, no, just I'm in the south, man. I'm in the south, baby. I ain't gonna play with y'all in there. Don't do this. Don't come at me. Don't come at me. Just to be clear, he's bigger than rap. Yeah, he's bigger than rap. I agree with that. No, no, yeah. He's bigger than a conversation of lyrics. I get it. I want to. Tell you, nowhere, he had he know. Snoop no. overstood the concept of business, and that is something to praise him for. You, we, I know a lot of people that's cold as fuck, and they don't have their business in order. Amen. So I want to commend him for being an example of being cold, but knowing how to balance these things are, bro. Who have you seen in your life, outside your household, your block, your neighborhood, politicians-wise, that has been living his life in front of the camera all these years, unapologetically, and him? Point somebody to me. And I, and you and you have to point back to Snoop. Married, children, 
court, murder mm-hmm. cases. Uh, 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 Coaching uh, youth kids. Come on, bro. We can go on and on. He, 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 he has fan. been selfless. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he has know. been selfless, bro. And he is so big. He's the Barry Gordy of hip hop on and the he West put Coast. A lot, of, a lot of people on. Like, Man, what? like from the 52 Savage, brought him out to his house. Man, this guy. Like that. He, 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 he's his like whole he, family. It's like he opened them with welcome arms like that. Hey, bro. Uh, praise in abundance to Snoop Dogg, his wife, his family. Like, come on, bro. It is not easy to live in front of the camera, camera bro. Like that. Just, bro. I got to come clean with you, man. And to keep it like Come it on, man. I'm going to keep yeah. it clean, bro. The camera's always running, bro. Yeah. It ain't easy, man. Like, this is before the clicks was about uh, uh, My Life, Your Entertainment. Yeah. Let's keep it funky, bro. He's always lived in front of the camera. He's always was a pop star ever since Dre decided to put him on Deep <laughs> Cover. Deep Cover. No, no, he he definitely one of those guys, man, and it, it's not easy being in front of the camera, you know, like when I interviewed Ice T, that was one of the things that he he talked about. You know what I mean? Just that they would that there's always a plot that people would love to see him, you know what I mean? See him say be it. taken down. Say it. Thank That's you. what say I, it. he say, say he say he did that cop killer and to change it over and be able to transform and still be getting money and knew all those people and came from the streets like he did. Yeah. They would love to bring him down off Shout that. out to Bum B. Shout out to Ice T. Shout out to E forty. That's what I'm E40 trying to tell another you. One. If we if we if our community don't acknowledge this, you know, go buy you some Snoop Dogg cereal. Yeah. For go sure. buy you some Snoop Dogg Masterpiece For cereal. Sure. Go buy you some E forty, um, wines. The noodles, sauce, noodles whatever he got going on, go support. What I'm trying to tell you is like these people are living fearlessly in a world that where it is set up and designed for them to lose. Yeah, it's what you just yeah. said is real talk. Oh, he that's told that's me what that. I want to tell you, family. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So when you come outside your house, you got to be ready for whatever. My life, your entertainment. There's a consumer for everything. If it's about somebody's brains being put on the concrete, there's a consumer for that. Yeah. There's somebody at home clicking, talking about, oh, I just love to see me some brains on the ground. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and, and that is the world we live in. Right. That's why I stay to myself, man, because I don't want to put this on my kids, my wife. I've been blessed to right. to get to another aspect of where my spiritual footsteps are bigger than whatever I done yesterday. Yeah. So I like to keep it clean. That's, don't get me wrong, that's just me. I'm not yeah. making nobody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I got to keep it clean. I know that the camera's always rolling, so I always put it out there so you know that those options do exist. Wow, so, how was it working with Snoop? On that song like that was y'all together? It's that amazing. Woof, woof it was amazing. Snoop was open-minded and just, you know, um, I remember the night he came in to Baton Rouge. Remember everything he had on. Keep in mind, I was a fan first. Yeah. I still remember chewing somebody's ass out. Not literally. You feel me? Yeah. Behind them having my dog, uh, doggy style cassette, taking it to school. Didn't want to give me my doggy style cassette back. I'm like, I gotta get my shit back, bro. So you got it too, so man. I got what? it. Too. I, I had a, I had a whole fight over that C murder. See what I'm saying? Over that C murder, I let somebody borrow my CD at Wiley College. I let him borrow my CD. I'm gonna need that Fear back. Talk. Really? I'm be honest with you. You used to be a bully in school, nah. nigga. I heard about you. All that old trying. I'm trying to get on here, nigga. You were bullying, nigga. Free nah, shots, man. man. Let's talk about that hey, for a second. Yeah. I gotta yeah. talk about oh. that. Oh, for sure. Free shots, uh, you and Bun B. You bought it, that like, shit. Like, you man, I ain't need, listen, you nigga, I Bun. got so excited at the mall when you sent me that. Well, I uh, still, hey, I didn't even make it in the uh, store for a uh, while, nigga. Man, we just, <laughs> shout, shout out to d Trill, D-Money, the whole collective. Shout out to TB. Y'all know I'm tired, man. I'm going to get on the phone with y'all when we get through. Um, shout out to d Trill. They, they put it on the radio where I'm from this week, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was just a test of me because... I produce along with a partner of mine, Jay Super. We kind of make music together. Shout out to Jay Super and Street Symphony. Um, I wanted to see if it was going to wake him up, bro. Honestly. Like, I have been sending my brother, like, if if you're talking about UGK, are you sounding like UGK, he not going to mess with you. I'm just going to tell you that now. So... The old UGK. But see, I'm current. Like, with your eyes, with whoop with pimp, you know. And if I can hear the spirit of pimp in it or do something, I shoot it to him. It's too much UGK in it, smoke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, smoke. I don't want nobody mimicking what we've done. We got to have new up, up age. Just going to make son him that beat. I son him the, the, the verse. And first time in three years, he son it back like <laughs> the, the same day or the next day. And I was like, well, okay, this is it. Because, you know, I wanted to see if it could be something that we could do today. And if we can do it once, 
you know, possibly we can repeat it, repeat it. And so he got on there and did his thing. We ha- also have the uh, NBA player that's on there that plays with the Portland Trail Trailblazers from Austin, Texas, named Greg Brown. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was like a double entendre to use basketball terminology to talk about street stuff mm. because that afforded me the opportunity not to curse. Mm. You see? Wow. Hey, just, a, just a hard, yeah. just a hard, uh, hard song, bro. Real talk, you can't beat it, man. Fiend, so what? What? Um, when you think about No Limit, man, and, and the move uh, that that they made, and then Cash Money coming from down in New Orleans, man, like y'all never did do anything together, like y'all not like, like it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt, you anything. know. But I still, I would have loved. I'm a fan, so I get to give you my piece, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. I would have loved to see some kind of we yeah, were. tour. We, we were. It may, it may, it may, we I were. know. I'm, I'm just giving it to him. Let me get it. I talked talk to Birdman, Bird you know. Bird man, man, I talked to Birdman. Bird I talked to these people, man. I'm well, trying man. to see when it's going to happen, Well, man. see, I can tell you what. UGK <laughs> and No Limit, they ain't fighting no more. He, yeah. he and I got an EP together. That's hard, man. Yeah. That's you hard. Know. When is it coming out? We about we about a few more songs. When is it coming out? I'm ready songs. now. I'm going to let him. We a few more songs. Tell we got him, man. We got a song he bought it called Me UGK Proud. You know what I mean? Like, that's really? What I'm trying to, trying to tell you. It's a full circle, man. Well, like, you know me. I'm just a fan. How, I'm over here just fanning out. Hey, how, was, how was you able to work like, you didn't, you didn't work with a lot of different people. It mm-hmm. seemed like it made, it made me think you it's easy to work with you. Because like you didn't work with Currency. Rough Presently. Riders, you know, yeah. all that. So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's hey, like, buses, yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Right, so it's right. like, it just I'll, made me feel I'll like, tell you this thing, when I'm working with him, it's, it's nothing like a person that's always working. He mm-hmm. always working. That's what attract me to him. That's what make me respect him when we can't get work done because he's doing so much work, you know, and he's, he's been in the industry in ways I haven't, right? Mm-hmm. And so I have to respect it up until the fact to where even I, I'm smart enough to know that I need some advice from this guy because of his travel. I miss mine, you see? Mm-hmm. You're here today, though. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, yeah. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I have to be here today in a corrected way, and that takes pertinent advice from somebody that's experienced, see? You could tell me how to make a million dollars. I'm not going to listen to nobody. Not gonna, they ain't never did it. It don't right. make Easy. sense that's to right. me. Easy. You know what I mean? Because he done did it. Wow. You got to turn passion to profit. You know, like most people, gets kind of like pushed away from they, they they almost get talked out their game you know what I mean you know what you like right yeah. and somebody trying to tell you and what you don't like oh right. it's yeah. a bunch of them right. it's a bunch of them do that right. Right. about we, y'all in the right. south oh yeah oh they they want to make me they call me because I don't want to say certain people name is the best you got yeah. certain hey. people that be like man you know you you got you got a big platform everybody watching you man you got to stop saying that now no nigga this just, is what i've lived just to be i ain't clear. changing just to be yeah. clear you know what i mean they like to compare us a lot bro <laughs> comparison is the thief of joy true you know what i'm saying like i can enjoy that era of something don't get me wrong of course people gonna have their favorites but they keep wanting to compare it just takes away the body of work you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying people are gonna stop comparing LeBron and Jordan. They you, not. You're right. Knock yourself out. Yeah. But guess what? That was that man era. He existed as in that era to be great in that era. And today we have Bron right. Bron. Let's enjoy him for what that is. You know what I'm saying? But if who this, was the best? LeBron. I, I can't. I can't even. <laughs> I, I ain't got a dog in a race. It's a matter of opinion. It's yeah, a matter, it's of, opinion. A matter it's of opinion. Definitely a matter of opinion. But that LeBron stuff, you can put that in your bag, homie. You know, know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna jump all over. I, like, I ain't gonna get on that, man. No, I'm gonna tell you. This, <laughs> I'm gonna, this the funny thing about it. This so this how you know it's bad. They went to compare, okay, well, whose shoes you wearing? That, yeah, that, that's that. That's they let you I get, know it's I bad. get that all the time. They they, know that. They, like, you right ain't wearing Jordans like you wearing that, right? They're going to say that's you got on Jordans, right. right. you got on LeBron. That's, that's, that's true. That's, that's exactly true. That's that's true. Way see, all, I agree all with all that. Talk, I see, exactly agree with it. I agree with it, but what I disagree with is that we need to be saying, well, fiend shoes. Let me wear some fiend shoes. I'm with that, too. I'm with that, too. You know, all like, like, I like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the systemic stuff and the stuff that they use. I mean, it's it's a holiday every month, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, every freaking yeah. month. You yeah. never have yeah. time to readjust. It's gonna be Christmas. It's this is this. this, this. Mm-hmm. The thing of it is, is that we got to make our own holiday, make our own. You know, think right. Stop taking them monk ass chains off your neck. Put them together and help somebody. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Getting on their yeah. flash, and you look like a yeah. chop sandwich to me. But yeah. see that uh, for for Smoke D to get to that that spot, you know what I'm saying? You went through a lot. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these folks ain't never been through nothing. 
You done been through some things. That's true. Sometimes yeah. I tell you like, so so 25 year old, right, is living 25 year old what they think is the best version of their life. And whatever our version of, that's because we didn't got to that point of wisdom. We done went through that. So the thing is to not to kill the bridge between us. Right. Because the youth can pour their youth into us and we could be the smartest guys of age of wisdom, right? And we could pull into them and they could take that wisdom, they could be the smartest 25 year olds in their world. Well, it's not a matter of physical age, it's more of a, a mental age mm. and experience, you know what I'm saying? You could have 60 year old boys and 24 year old men. True. It's about a yeah. conscious level. And like I always, my mom always say, nobody's gonna let think any higher than their conscious level gonna allow them to. This is about, again, the thing that we talk about, communication. Mm -hmm. Them folks over there in China got their kids in Cacus. Yeah, in kindergarten, first, yeah, second grade, like that, yeah. Right. We over here with the dumb, the dumb, the dumb, don't say this, don't say that, critical race this, you know what I mean? Division. And, yeah, it's so all a confusing thing. And so it's just for anybody that's tired of being persecuted for free to just come together. It's easy. That's real. Instead That's of you getting and showing me your monkey ass chain, yeah. my grandmama said it to me perfect pertinently. She said all the time, Smokey, you did not get free from the chains on your ankles and you say for God to, for you to buy them and put them on your neck. Yeah. Mm. You see? Mm. That's true. All of this kind of stuff, the stuff that's wasteful because we shine on each other. We ain't shining on them. Mm -hmm. We get a gun yeah. for each other. We don't get a gun, you know? Yeah. And so it's that divide that we have to conquer and I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna share this. It's communication. Mm -hmm. Right See? back to it. You know, but we I gotta, yeah, we got to think about sh serious shit, right? Yeah. You know, and that's why I love this brother here. Like, he understand. You see, he understand. I could debate with him. You see, and I'm pushing a line that he got experience in. I got experience in other things, but what are we gonna do to make it make sense together? Together, what what the fuck we gonna do about that? Mm -hmm. See, you know, everybody acing it and tracing it and watching what a pole pimp place. Wow. Everybody slick, you know, you still jizzle. That shit don't mean nothing. When we gonna communicate right? Stop talking and do something. I I, I, I love it. <laughs> let me let me you 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 done sit in the in the dome, man. Uh, Boss talk one on one. You got to give me a pimp story. Uh, uh, one that you ain't told. I need to hear a pimp story. Yeah, yeah I, the dome is here. This is where we do it at. This is where everybody expect right. for it to land. Be honest. Am I right? Yeah, you right. Everybody come <laughs> on here. If you got a pimp yeah, story, I got yeah, a thing. Got you a about, hey, listen, I need that one that you know you ain't really just, nobody ain't heard this story. But I got another question for you in a minute. Well, I guess I don't, I don't know if I gave one. I, don't, I almost got killed in front of Pimp House. Hmm? Wow. Dude put a gun to 38 right there. That's the one where you say he he came yeah. in. Pim came out like yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He said, oh, yeah. he said, put it down. For the dude that even said something, he had stuck his gun and walked the phone. Pim said, put it down. What was it all about? I mean, he just. It was me put it down. being smoked. <laughs> <dude. laughs> Missed that guy, bro. Yeah. Missed that guy, man. I would have got my face blew off. Mm -hmm. But it's the it's the influence that he had. And it was, you know, he and Bond was the leader. You know what I'm saying? Like, I respect Bond like I respect Pimp because they both respected me. Like, I was going to be the third member of UGK. I just went to prison. Yeah. Right? So it's a little bit different. Like, Pimp, if you knew Pimp, and you really knew Pimp, like all these people get on here with these good-ass stories and, ah, uh, they don't know Pimp. They don't know. Like, think about it, bro. If you with somebody and you get along all the time, somebody fake. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, I'm right. not that kind. I'm you know, I'm not that. You know, hell yeah, we got into plenty of shit. To agree to disagree or something. I lived with it for three years, but some shit ain't gonna tell. You yeah. know, but yeah, man, but one thing about it is he always kept it one thou while. Hmm. He gonna tell the truth. Now, the other pimp that they were talking about all I didn't know him, I was in prison. Yeah. You know, and for anybody that wanna interview me in the future, do not ever ask me how a pimp died. Yeah. Don't yeah. ever ask me that. Yeah. Yeah. Please. So yeah, man, um shit. It's so much going. I mean, uh, it was just like a regiment, man. We had the bud room, you know, you had this room where you had all the MCs in the town, and you had to be in the top ten. You couldn't come. Mm. What was Mama West at when you had this house at such an early age? Uh Mama West was in uh Alvesta. So she, she was 
They were, he's lived on San Jacinto, and he lived probably about 10 miles, you know, go down the Gulf way in Alvesta. That's where he lived. She there. ever come over and see what y'all were doing over there? Yeah, I, <laughs> no, but she, she wouldn't really just come all the time. Like, I would go over to Mama's house to get away. Oh, Mama, okay. I wanted to get away because, you know, they wouldn't count out, you know, it was more of a pimp thing, but certain people could go to Mama's house. Yeah. You know, but I was able to go, so like, I know you're thinking of a story. I'm skipping through my head because I don't want to reveal too much. Let's please understand that I'm with it's you. It's all love, man. I just don't. But I can tell you this, though. How about we do a story like this and have a continuating situation? I have some video footage like that I told you about. Yeah, yeah, I got to get it. It's unreleased and unreleased. unseen. Never been seen we'll, before. We'll, we'll, never been seen before. And we're going to drop it. We're going to drop it. And, drop it, yeah. That's how oh, You know, your platform, man, man you drop man, it. Man, I'm going to put it out. It's got to go, man. It. Somebody got to see that, and then so, they're going to understand. Is it going to drop this set? This, I'm going to get it from you now or later on? I'm waiting on the guy to send it now. As soon as he sends it to me, I'm going to send it to you. That's hard, man. Mm -hmm. What about you, Finn? Give me, give me a story, man. You a pimp, pimp story. I got a uh, cool one just being able to know that he valued my pain from time to time. Wow. You know, I just thought that was just dope. Like, these guys are heroes. Uh, I walked from the No Limit Studios, and it was next to this residence in, so I could climb over the fence and go back to the hotel room, right? People was in there working on Kick Dope for C Murder album. And uh, I believe it was Kick Dope on C Murder album. Yes, right. And I remember, you know, he was like, uh, man, I'm over here in the room, man. Just just come over. I want you, I want you to hear what I'm working on for C right now, you know? And I go up in there, he got the rolling eight, um, kind of like, not a, right, right, the rolling gray. You know, rolling, yeah, 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 yeah. Gray, black yeah. So he hitting on that bit. He got the headphones on. Looking at me like this, him, he took some headphones on. I'm working for this for seat murder. You know what I'm saying? He kept the headphones on, listening to the drum check. Like, ooh, ooh. Man, I'm like, I'm seeing Pimp cook up a beat, bro. You heard me? Been going in my middle school, high school, listening to these people on my headphones, bro. And I'm like, man, this bitch ain't out the pot yet. You heard me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, bro, like, that's what I loved about. Snoop coming around. I was, I'm a hip hop baby, man. Yeah, yeah, I got to so watch him do something. Luda tell me, uh, and uh, Paul, DJ Paul tell me this all the time. He was like, you and goddamn Luda, y'all got a hip hop quota for everything dealing with life, you know what I'm saying? I was <laughs> like, I'm a hip hop baby, dog. Like, so um, Snoop was the same way. I, I, I um, look up to this gentleman and got a chance to do music with him and he loved it. I'm talking about, he'd be like, man, let me just get on the ad libs on that bitch, you know what I mean? And I used to be like, this is so, Dope, bro. Snoop is like, this is Snoop. You talking about? Let me get on the ad lib of a song because he just walked in and heard me yeah. in here. And um, we was recording some stuff too. And um, I don't know if he still has the sessions, but me and him went to recording just songs on our own mm -hmm. at his house in the country club. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is. I just, How was that life like? Like when I yeah, you was part of the, uh, you know, all of, all of I was living in the country club, right? It, I didn't live in the country club. Yeah, um, how ironic! I lived down the street from it today, though. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, um, but I had a, my nice little setup. I had a home paid for. I was barely there. Yeah. I had a condo. Uh, they said you made eighty k a month, right? What eighty k a month for like? That's summer. independently. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. yeah, I ain't make. I ain't make no. I didn't see real liquid cash to it's after, after the no years, limit run. Saying, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you know what? Um, wasn't really tripping. I knew money was gonna be there. Like you know, Wendy Day asked me years ago. Uh, you won't be famous, you won't be rich. I like to be honest with you, I prefer to be rich. Rich, yeah. You know what I'm saying? My brother was getting money in the street at the time, and you know, so I knew, what, you know, taking garbage bags, <laughs> black hefty bags, bro, money, counting money yeah. out, out of bags filled with money, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? All night, you know what I mean? If anybody yeah. ever count a lot of bread before you notice, it's just not no. It's gonna take a minute. Yeah. Before money machines, cash yeah, head, yeah, they scoff face dreams. Yeah, you got 12 people in that Yeah, yeah. it was me and him. He didn't yeah. trust nobody yeah. outside of his, you know. So, you know, at the same time I was down and out, knowing my brother was out here, at the same time, he wanted my help. Yeah. So I was helping, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so I wasn't, I think that molded me, to, I just wasn't really tripping, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah but I went independently, oh my God, bro. 80,000 a month for, for, for a long time. You know what yeah. I mean? Shout 36 for willing to do that joint venture too. Yeah. You know, the money come in it. You know what I mean? Once you figure your thing, but you gotta know your consumer. Mm -hmm. You know your consumer. That's what cats are today in the music industry. They don't know the consumer. They just ain't just, just put out. They just reach for everything. I yeah. wanna put out my tape. I wanna put out my tape. You don't even know who's listening to it. Yeah, they don't check the analytics. You gotta find, yeah. they, they need the analytics. First, they gotta build a fan base to have the analytics, analytics, right? Yeah. And most people don't wanna do the legwork. They think I can post it, 
And I'm gonna sit and wait. Yeah, they don't want to do the old master. I should like, be, like, I, you know, I should be a priest. superstar. Everybody yeah. think they just post it on the hand, hand, yeah. right? And they go like that. The hand, yeah. hand, you build a relationship with the person. Wow. Well, who in here didn't get a trip, bro? I'm gonna get one. We leave. I here. got one, but I want, I want to ask you a question. Or something? I got a question for you. Yeah, we got a break. See murder, um, locked up right now. Um, been locked up for 20 years. Off and on, yes. Off and on, yes. Um, what? Are you have you been linking with him or do you? I have haven't a, seen him as often as I want, and then for, and we talk about Corey Miller for sure. He was man in real time. He was me and Max leader, like you know what I'm saying. We ran. We we I can't put all my dogs. fingers together. It, it, it wasn't just talk, you know what I'm saying. You know, um, yeah, man. We really, really. I I just want to see him get get back with his daughters. Yeah. He didn't raise these girls from behind that wall. So I'm just, I'm man, I'm praying, uh, of course. We all praying right. that we, we, well, the we free. In, we in position to go in there and see That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I visit him. I visit, I get, when Mac was there, I was just telling um this brother, oh, Mac, I can't think of his name. Oh, Brian Jackson, I believe is his name. I met him. Brandon Jackson, excuse me, I may have said that wrong. I met him yesterday. He said he ran real tight with C back there. And uh, I was just telling him that um, I'm going to have to get his daughter info. I want to continue to visit him, you know what I'm saying? Because I normally, I'm going to just say kill two birds, one stone. I go visit Mac, I can visit him, I go visit him, I can see Mac, right? Yeah. So now we got Mac home by the grace of God, and we have to still continue to go see our brother Corey Miller, you know what I'm saying? I'll get on his visiting list. But, bro, he is a different type of strong. You know, he's a different type of strong. And I'm so happy that the Kim Kardashians and whoever else out there want to pour their time and energy on bringing him home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, funny, I'll tell you a funny thing, a story about C right quick, and I, of course we get out of here. We went to Europe, right? Uh, I believe P didn't want to go to Europe, you know? Snoop was like, I'm going to Europe. I do my runs over there. He's like, uh, or would you bring some of the younger guys with you? So Snoop was cool with bringing us to Europe. 1998, all right? So I'm out there touring off of One Air Family. I actually wrote Street Life in Europe. Wow. But that was my 1999 release, July 6th. So we were over there overseas, man. See, just big brother up, man. We get to Paris. He like, look, we about to go to a, a, a surplus store. We're going to get us some fatigues. Everybody going to get knives. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be straight because we ain't got no poles over here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be straight, better protect ourselves. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, we went to the top of the Eiffel Tower. At the same time, I mean, we did everything culturally yeah. a young brother seeing the world should do. Yeah. But at the same time, we didn't forget. Did you, did you, oh, my yeah. God, we did not forget, right? <laughs> so we're in a, a concert, right? We're chilling. You heard me? But we were like, the biggest can course of dogs you can have, Snoop can have, mm -hmm. that he didn't even know that we was ready trained on sight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody let off a gun, pow, in the club, right? We smelled the gunpowder from the stage, right? And had not one gun, nothing but a knife and some hands. <laughs> While we running through the club looking at who let off the gun shot. You heard me? What's up? It's not a gunpowder, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Running through this thing. You heard me, me, C, Mac, the okay. twins. Who are we looking? Who are we looking? And that was how we was about each other. Yeah. Oh my God, that's how we was about each other. Yeah. Bro, we got ready. We did this tour. We went to one part of Germany. We had to, they had to lock us up in the back of the tour bus, and the driver had to say he was transporting equipment because this particular area was so racist having these black boys come through, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. We went to a checkpoint, I'll never get this because Thanksgiving was super close. We was back there, he said, the driver said, look man, don't make no noise. I don't care if I knock on the door. If I don't tell you this when I knock, don't answer, don't say nothing, right? He locked us back there. We went through the checkpoint, he had pulled over somewhere. He came back, let us know it's okay. Thanksgiving, we eating. Uh, club crackers and Kool-Aid to bring in our Thanksgiving, right? Oh, we got somewhere like Switzerland. We're skiing, messing around. We're getting ready to go to Japan, Hawaii, right? C said, give me y'all passports. Give me your passports. I don't want y'all to lose them. Give me your passports. All right, big bro, no problem. Here, take the passport. We get to the airport. We had to drive an hour from the ski resort to the Switzerland airport. We get there, right? We're getting ready to load up, getting ready to get on a plane. We're getting ready to get on a plane, we did not have our passports. C right? C left the passports in a safe in the hotel <laughs> at, at the at the ski lodge, right? As the first time I seen his face, you know, like he he disappointed us, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that deep, 
But to him, it, it him, him thinking he because he was taking responsibility. Oh, and then, and oh then, man! Yeah. And I just was like, "This is my dog, man. This is my oh." He gave me and Mac our tanks, we put our tanks around our neck. Wow! You know, once we had been there and you know they seen what was going on, and we had the, we like now nah, I'm like, don't trip, man. Snoop said, "Y'all got your passports. Hey, I'm gonna see y'all back in the states, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see you back in the states, cuz. See you back in the states, cuz. See you back in the states, cuz. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, so we're gonna miss Japan, we're gonna miss Hawaii. So we get in the car, we see like, don't trip, man, just don't trip. Then we go to the ski resort, drive an hour, get the passports, come back, right? So we're sitting there, he's still a little heated. Boy, they got guys walking around, many 14, the, the officers and stuff yeah. in the airport. Man, we go through one way, it was the wrong way. So the dude jumped out with the gun. Da, 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 da. She like, man, you better get that goddamn gun out my face, man. He like, what? Man, out. another dude come out there at 14. So we like, oh, we oh, we up, it's up. I'm like trying to calm down. I, I'm in his face, round right? like, yeah. like, 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 see, calm down. They'll kill us. <laughs> and Thumbs. no one would know about this for a very long time. Yeah. Mm. Looked at me, that he, man boy, looked at me. You heard me here. Oh, we had this. Who had this in his eye, dog? Yeah. But I, I, I was just being honest, and he felt that, and he calmed it down, and that was that, right? That was that, right? So we got accepted. We gonna catch a flight the next day. We can't. We ain't gonna miss. We gonna miss this flight going yeah. back to the states. We get on a plane, come back to the United States. We get on a plane. The cat's still uptight. Maddie sitting right here. God bless his soul and his wife that passed away. Right? Yeah, magic. Ski team, I never forget they got these red suits. This woman, the guy's woman, is kneeing him in the back of his seat, right? So he's like, he'll get up. He like, man. And she's just like, he like, say brown, say round like the they keep kneeing me in the back of my seat. I like, nah, dog, like, just chill, bro. You hear me? Just chill. She did it again, right? He like, man, hold on, bro. He likes, say bro, she do it again. It's gonna be a problem. I said, nah, it's all good. She did it again. He took his seat and laid it all the way back in her lap. Wah! Right? They jumped up. All these dudes jumped up. We jumped up. The sky marshal jumped up. You heard me? He like, you better call the pilot, bitch. It's up. You imagine, right? Bitch, it's up. Bitch, it's going to go down. <laughs> it's about to be a problem, bro. Uh, we got out there playing. Sky marshal police waiting on us. You heard me? I was looking at him like I, he just couldn't chill. Just a bit. You heard me? <laughs> but really, bro, bro, how old were you guys we, at the time? We, we had to be 20, man. Yeah, you nigga got all that money on these planes and jumping oh, around, going to these different countries. That's, oh, that's a different oh, level, oh, ain't oh, it? Oh, yeah, you're going to learn a day. You're going to learn a day. Like, uh, it, was a, it was a real lesson. I'm happy Snoop to this day brought us over there. And um, like I said, it, made, it motivated me to do the Street Life album because it let me know the world was a ghetto. You know, I had this No Limit chain, this Rolex and all these things, but when I did Street Life, I stripped it myself for all those trinkets to put out my music and shoot my videos because I, I really saw the world was a ghetto. I was in one part in the, uh, out of the country, I saw this woman hanging her clothes up on a, on a clothesline. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I remember that from home. I remember that, man. Yeah. So I was like, it just was real. I was like, man, the world is really a ghetto. Marvin, these people knew what they were talking about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The war knew what they were talking yeah. about, you know what I'm saying? And ghetto all, boys. All bro, they, they knew the what they were talking ghetto. about, the world yeah. is a Let ghetto. Let me ask you this, yeah. man. You, uh, we gotta, I got a, uh, Ask you about uh, Soldier Slim. I can't get on mm -hmm. off here without asking about Soldier Slim. Like you were down there in New Orleans. Every time I go down there, it's a different story. Uh, somebody, they all love. They show so much love to Soldier Slim. Mm -hmm. uh, he this, he that. Was that same love here for him when he was in the city? When he was riding around different hoods, different neighborhoods. Um, believe it or not, you know, um, love Slim. Shout out to Hound, his cousin Hound. Um, shout out to Miss Linda Tao, shout out to uh, G.I. Peaches. Peaches. Shout out to his family, shout out to Lil Soldier. Lil Slim. Soldier, that's my yeah, guy. Yeah, um, I never rode around with Slim. To, so I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure it was there. Right, yeah. I know how he's loved. He's yeah. oh, he's loved, loved now for sure, but. Um, but you know, um, I don't, I didn't ride around with him to know if he had dislike or, you know, had like, yeah. I was in the studio. You know yeah. I, mean? I wasn't, you know what I, mean? I got out in the streets, I, 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 you know, I was young and learning. I had too many guns in the car with me all the time. Like I was, nobody wanted to ride with me. Did you yeah. and him link up and Of course, man, we recorded, me and BG recorded something. That's sure. what I was trying to tell you. Like I recorded with 
Cash money. I, 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 me and Birdman, like we these. I was great with Birdman for. I'm just giving you hell. I just ain't pills. Nah, I'm just letting you know. Like, told, uh, Birdman told you to stop the bank paper. Right? I'm trying to tell you when I was 14, <laughs> man. He did. That's he what he told like, you that. He like, I love your voice, man. You know, but you know me. Mm, I don't know, man. You need to talk about this gangster shit, man. You know what I'm saying, like, man. You know, and I felt him on that. I just had to do it my way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah, when one era family, I got a chance to talk about all this stuff that I had went through. Street saying safe I got to talk about this, the things I just talked to Jim about earlier I had a chance to get this stuff off it was therapy for me it helped me I didn't have no therapist no way I had the studio I had the guys before me that put it down Bro, that, that oh. put this music down and allowed me to know it was okay diamonds up against the wood you know what I'm saying my baby mama say I ain't living right you know <laughs> I, I, I was I was able to get this yeah. and it was like I didn't have a baby mama to tell you nigga just act like you got a baby mama nigga the music's so good a nigga going to character who the hell baby guy come over here you gonna you gonna say something yeah do your thing I got a Wait, okay. who got you? Got to use the restroom too, Phil. Get up and go. Just get up and go. I want to ask you. Come here, come right here. Too, so what is this here? I got in my hand. He done had that around the table. I don't know what I got. Is it got liquor in it? Cause I, I didn't drink you, it. You could drink some. I didn't know if it was liquor in it. I don't drink, so it's hemp, man. No, it's hemp in it. CBD. Yeah. Okay. So the difference is, I farm and I manufacture. Man, you talked yeah. a little bit yeah, about. We it. talked a little bit out there. So I started this with a seed. And, uh, Let's talk about the hemp aid right quick before we get y'all out of here. All right. So once again, I'm a farmer. I farm about 4,000 plants of CBD. Then I also manufacture uh, I got five flavored lemonades, actually seven. I got tea cakes, cookies, popcorn, uh, chocolate chip cookie. I got lemon pepper seasoning, multi, uh, multi pepper seasoning, body butter, bath salts, and uh, L.A. guy in Mississippi farming. Wow, man, so how can we get these? Man, go to my website, uh, Casimir Farms, C-A-S-I-M-I-R Farms.com. Just order it. Your listeners tell me where that they heard it off the show. I'll give them a 20% discount on the product. Wow, all right, man, that's all I needed to know. I didn't want to end it on that note, man. So, uh, man, Smoke D, you know I love you, bro. This ain't our last time. We got a lot more to do. Oh, yes, sir, man. Hey, hey I'm finna, we finna shut it down, though. Uh, Trill Talk, no pill talk. Smoke D, how can people get a hold of you? Hold on one second. Uh, my Instagram is S M I Z N O K E. Switch out. And um, my Facebook is the same. S M I Z N O K E. You can get me on all social media platforms by that name. Fiend, how, how can people get a hold of you, man? You, I know you. Everybody know you. Hey, we uh, love you. Hey, love Big is mutual. Fans. Love is mutual. Listen, man, I need my little tank, and, and you got to give me something, too. Uh, what, what, you, what you got? A UGA? Uh, we, some got, kind of, we, we got a t-shirt, like, a hat. Like, then give me I something. You, I got you some hoodies out there. In the well, I'll take it. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. But go ahead. Oh, it's all good, man. Hit me up on Instagram, 504 Fiend. I know I said, oh, but it's actually a zero. Already. 504 Fiend. I'm on Twitter, uh, Fiend for the Month. Uh, I also got a clothing brand named Sleepy Bear Apparel tapped in with that. And uh, we got a compilation coming out called Season Open of JLR. September 7th is a Jet Life release. Also, I got a project available right now, a new theme project entitled Coolers in Session 3. You dig? Production by the Honorable C Note, the Mecca, Raphael RJ2, uh, David Adams. And a gang of the cool people on that thing. Paul Wall on that thing, you hear me? So, uh, yeah, man, tap in, tap in. Get with your people. DM me for all business yeah, inquiries, you hear me? And uh, everything that we got popping, just tap in, man. I'm officially a motivational speaker, you hear me? That's where I'm at in my life right now. You can go listen to all the music, and you're going to see the messages in the bottle. So just tap in, you feel me? You ever, you know, trying to get yourself together, tap in my line, 504 p you're going to have something on there that's going to help you one step further, closer to where you're trying to get your hair, man. Already. Yeah, all right, man. man. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show, man. Appreciate you, baby. It's Appreciate been another you. great segment. Yes, sir. Of Boss Talk 101. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Where the bosses talk. Where the bosses talk. I know that's right. Jet Life Jones. <laughs> hey.